First News with Keeler in the morning on WIBX and WIBX950.com. Hi, WIBX. Good morning. That's probably Griffo. Hey, Bill. Hey, Joe. How are you? Good. How are you doing? <laughs> hey. Good. I'd like to tell you I'm in the booth, and we're not on the air right now, but we are live, so don't say anything <laughs> crazy. Don't like, talk about Jeff. for your request. Like, don't say anything crazy like Cuomo should resign or anything like that. <laughs> um, uh, good morning, Joe. We've uh, we've lost our phone screener. Apparently, I said something, and he walked out. I don't know what happened. Can't uh, find good help these days. No, nope, it's terrible. <laughs> terrible. Uh, good morning, Joseph. Senator Joe Griffo. Man, this is just hitting the fan, isn't it? The fly spec is hitting the fan. <laughs> <laughs> it you is, must have had a very interesting show today. We've been on the phone with a number of other stations in the North Country, so I didn't get a chance to hear... Uh, your program so far, but I'm sure you had a pretty interactive day. Well, song of the day is My Way, or All By Myself, mm-hmm. or it's over. Uh, it's over by Roy Orbison, uh, Orbison, or the Rolling Stones, It's All Over Now. But for Cuomo, it might be the Lenny Kravitz song, It Ain't Over Till It's Over. Yeah. What do you think, Joe? I'm predicting it'll be today, tomorrow, before Monday, he will resign. What do you think? Well, I think it's uh, become... Uh, very obviously problematic for him to navigate this as he has done in the past. He obviously issued his denial yesterday. I had a yeah. chance to to uh, watch his um, video, uh, read a lot of the AG's report, but not through the entire thing. It was 165 pages. And uh, look, it's re- reprehensible and troubling behavior, but there are a number of other things going on too. And I think it's something you wrote that I read uh, that I tend to concur with, and I indicated yesterday in our statement. The one thing that that, uh, is important is he's always professed that he works for the people of the state of New York. So regardless of what the political people are saying, it didn't matter to him. But these are serious uh, offenses. And now that the report has indicated there is a validity to this, uh, I don't feel that he can function, contrary to what he continues to say, that he will do the business of the people of the state of New York. I don't see how he can't be distracted. It's obvious that... He's, and, and we have some serious issues. And he not only has this sexual harassment uh, problem, but he also has the ongoing federal investigation, the component that remains on a nursing home's information release, as well as the book deal and what his what state employees did or didn't do. Uh, so I think uh, there's no way he can continue to do the job. So based on that and what he has always said, um, I think you're going to see it him leaving, the question is, how does he do this? Uh, you've lost the confidence of your political allies, your partners in government, uh, as, as you know and you've seen. Uh, I don't know. The, the Assembly, I, we've asked that they need now to expedite. It's, I think the, the straw, in my opinion, that made a difference here is the Speaker himself. Yeah. We've been asking him to put the shield down because he's had a shield up and to protect the governor. And finally, he's lowered the shield, and now uh, you see that the uh, Judiciary Committee may embark upon doing what it, it yeah, is entrusted yeah. and its responsibility to do. There hasn't been a governor that's been impeached since 1913. Um, obviously, Spitzer went out in, uh, in flames. But um, uh, I, I can't imagine Cuomo wants to leave that legacy. Because it's, 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 prior to this, you, as you said, the shield was there. There was a protection. That's gone. It's clearly gone. And even Hochul, can, it, wasn't it something, Joe, when Hochul came out yesterday and said, this is, this is disgusting, basically, and, and he's got to go. Um, and you, I, I thought that you was know shocking. What, Bill, Bill, it's basically, I think, again, something you wrote. I mean, they had no other choice, and they had an obligation yeah. and responsibility based upon what they the, had been saying in the past. Right. Democrats uh, are the it, party of, of Trump is not is, – is, is, is not morally capable to be president based on what uh, he has been accused of. And the Democrats have been the party of me, too. So how do, how do you remain that, not only in New York, but nationally, and allow for this governor to, to stay? He has to go, and now he knows there's no protection. Maybe he stays a couple of days to negotiate something. And I don't know if this is even possible, Joe. You might know. Is it possible for the governor to say, "All right, I'm going to save everybody the time. I'm going to I'm going to resign, but here's what I want in return for me to go away quietly. I, I need everything just to drop. Let me go away. Don't come after me. Don't come after the 
the book deal don't uh, is that possible well there's i don't know what would be used relative to any potential negotiations between his attorneys and prosecutors particularly now in albany county the da is looking at this da soros yeah, yeah. Uh, you do have the federal aspect that's still uh, ongoing that one component at least that remains uh, you're right about the book deal and anything else that may, I mean, it doesn't prevent any civil suits from sure. happening, as the yep. AG said yesterday, from uh, many of these lady respectable women who have uh, come forward. So I, I think there's, you know, he's got a lot of problems right now that's swirling around him, and that's why he can't continue to function in his role despite right. what he's yep. saying. And that to me is, is equally significant as the charges that have been levied against him. And now the question, as you had indicated, is what's because it's not in his DNA to leave. Uh, he not only thought he could weather this similar to, uh, you know, he looked at the Al Franken situation and then looked at the governor of Virginia. Uh, both of these issues were one left early, one didn't leave yeah. at all, and was trying to navigate. But I think it became much more compounded and complex with the report and the myriad of investigations that are ongoing. And the fact that we're facing, still facing a public health crisis, right. as well as as economic issues and things of that nature. So you're right. I, I think, you know, and then with the assembly now willing to begin the initiation, it appears, uh, that is that, that threat assessment from him. He's looking at this, and he's looking at his legacy. Uh, and I think it's something you said also. Think about this fall from last year mm-hmm. to where he is right now. Uh, it's got to be doing a number on him um, mentally right now. <clears throat> well, I got to tell you, the Tappan Zee family's happy right now. <laughs> They're still angry over the bridge name yeah. thing. Um, I, 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 Joe, I'm. It's. I, I don't think there's there's any option for him. And going forward, um, it looks like we're about to have our first female governor in New York State. You know, you it's kind of interesting that? that this process, if you look at the last three governors, I know. Uh, we've had a similar situation. I mean, he, uh, Spitzer allowed us to have the first African-American governor, mm-hmm. but then Governor Patterson had some of his own issues, and then uh, now Cuomo could do the same for the first female governor in the state. But I think this pattern over since 2007 is problematic, too. The last three Democratic governors, uh, we've seen a lot of, uh, of these behavioral issues that are just unacceptable. Yeah. And, and uh, how much do you, I mean, you know, you've you've dealt with him inside, um, on the inside and behind closed doors. Um, the, the old saying, be careful how you treat people when you're on top, because on the way down can be a rough run. Um, I, I think it, it holds true completely with this governor. He's a tough guy to deal with. He, he can be very mean. And I don't think he has a lot of friends out there. No, I think that's an accurate portrayal. I mean, I, I think he was not really a social person. We discussed this before, uh, and he was really, I mean, the problem here is he started with potential, uh, and and really the first term gave opportunities to really do some good things in New York, yeah. and I'm not sure where it went askew relative to his own personality, style, and approach. But as you said, it's a really, uh, I, I mean, demanding is okay. I mean, to, to really, I mean, it's, you talk about the toxic work environment there. Uh, he was very demanding. Uh, you see that, though, in, in a lot of successful athletic programs and things sure. of that nature. But he yeah. took it to extremes. And now you're seeing uh, that there was fear, there was intimidation. Those type of, of tactics are just unacceptable in a workplace or anywhere, really. And, and you're right, they were hard-nosed. And, and he was really not a social person, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. Uh, that you know, when you look at different personalities in public life, um, he just uh, was a, a little different in that regard. And um, I think that all comes into this. And the other point is a lot of times people talk about how he was in this competition with his father, which didn't, you know, you'd have to talk to psychologists about this, uh, why and how he felt this need to compete almost while he praises his father. It's almost like he's in competition with his yeah, father. Yeah. So, so it's, complex guy obviously. it's also you know you bring up you bring up his first term and, and by the way somebody asking me this morning how come you're not covering the fact that congresswoman tenney uh has called for his resignation 
Well, I'm not covering that because she's been calling for it for nine years. <laughs> <laughs> Long before this. Uh, I mean, she's been calling. She was one of the first. Yes, she was one of the first. She was the first to ask him to resign. But, I, uh, Joe, you mentioned that first term. And I, I remember people saying, I got to tell you, he's more like a, a moderate Republican than he is a Democrat. And then all of a sudden he took this very sharp left turn. Especially and, right around the Cynthia safe, Nixon. <laughs> safe Act. The, uh, the, uh, and then, uh, oddly enough, he attacked the teachers' union. I mean, it, 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 this, some of the moves he has made uh, uh, are, are baffling, but he seemed to be in the best place when he was a moderate, almost a conservative, I wouldn't go as far as to say as a conservative Democrat, but certainly a moderate Democrat. Yeah, absolutely. He began as a centrist and and tried to govern accordingly, and he had split government and made it work. And that was one of the uh, testaments that he used to talk about what you need in leadership. Uh, and, and as you indicated, I mean, we're in a strange political world right now where you see a lot of extremes on on both sides. Uh, and, and Andrew, it may have started with actually Zephyr Teachout when she began to challenge right. him the first primary. Right, right. But but it it. Uh, you know, he went, and, and that was a purposeful strategy, uh, not only a philosophic belief and perspective. And, uh, look, I think that's, that, that causes problems. But the way I would say it is, um, at this point in time, uh, you know, ambition is okay, actually. I don't believe that ambition is a, a problem for someone. It's when you have blind ambition, when yeah, you begin man. to be motivated just strictly for what you need to do and where you need to get yourself. That's a problem. That somewhere, somewhere, somehow, he lost his way, yeah. and and then take the DNA that we talked about. That's in him, and the combative nature, and the vindictive nature. Uh, these all became uh, things that were, as you indicated, Bill. When you don't have a lot of friends to to support you and to yeah, protect yeah. you, that was a similar problem with Spitzer. He was very hubris. Yeah, and 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 that's what came to his fall. Whereas David Patterson, people liked him. Mm-hmm. You know, so people were willing to give him a little bit of the benefit of the doubt with some of the things that he had ongoing. So that does make a difference to a certain, uh, in a certain point and way, is how you treat people and how you work with people. Uh, and that doesn't mean you have to, again, give up your own style. It's yeah, just that yeah. you've got to recognize, you know, where you are, the environment in which you're in. So this is uh, so disappointing in so many ways, so unfortunate, uh, because we need to focus on the business uh, before us. The, the challenges and problems that confront us, and here we are talking about this and um, and being ri- and people ridiculing and making jokes, as you said uh, about uh, you know different song titles, things yeah. of that nature, and uh, it's kind of uh, you know we'll see how it all ends, uh, and it will end as you indicated, uh, but it's unfortunate that the people of the state are all going. Through We're the lo- too. We, we are the losers. There's no doubt about it. No. We, we lose in this. Yeah, and another yeah. thing that's interesting now, and I think you're going to have Ryan on today, because uh, I was listening yesterday, and I think Ryan called in, yeah. uh, is the CNN connection and what his brother mm-hmm. did. I think there's got to be a consequence there, too. I mean, the, now you're seeing in this AG's report that he was extensively involved in trying to tell people how to deal with the media and overcome the media scrutiny and coverage of the situation. And to have a, a primetime anchor on being involved like that, despite the fact there's a family member, I think that's an issue for the network, too. I, I'd be interested to hear Ryan's perspective. Uh, I'll, you know. I'll, I'll ask him. I, I disagree with that, I and, and maybe it's because I, I have brothers, and I, I would be there for my brother. And, and I, you know, had, had Chris Cuomo come out in defense, you know, constantly defending his brother in this situation, you might have an issue. But, you know, giving him advice... Um, the point, I, the know, point I'm making, though, I, I Bill, is I think the network show. has a policy and that he may right. have violated their own right. policy. Well, that's possible. You know, like when, that's that's the di- point I'm making. Not that he wouldn't go to his brother's defense right. and be able to talk to his brother. But in the AG's report, it comes out, the Washington Post did a story on this, but the AG's report even goes more into depth and in saying yeah. that he was right. actually in strategy meetings and everything. And I don't know right. that the network the really is- would allow that, you know. Well, uh, that'll be interesting. No doubt about it. And I'll ask, uh, I will ask Ryan about that. And then uh, finally, I want to... if that's I, the case, we can get Ryan back to give us consulting advice and everything. Right, right. Um, I, again, don't see a problem with that. But again, I don't know what CNN's policy is. But here, here's, we'll talk more about that coming up. Last thing for you, Joe, I, I wanted to ask is that, um, okay, Governor Kathy Hochul, get used to saying that, 
Um, and we have a lot of projects. There's been a lot of things that have been going on. Of course, a lot of investment in uh, in Utica, Rome, in the Valley, uh, in Marshy, and a, a lot of money spent here. Um, and I realize you and uh, Brindisi at the time uh, played a very big role in that. But the governor is, is, is it's been part of his initiative to rebuild upstate New York. Um, how do you feel Kathy Hochul will handle that? And and I get it that she's from upstate New York. But then the other part of this is, uh, how does this affect Roanne Destito? Well, uh, I mean, I don't know what would happen. I think all the cabinet would pretty much remain in place if they yeah. cho- if they so inclined. And Commissioner Destito has done an extraordinary job, and she's just uh, an exceptional person, too, of integrity and mm-hmm. character. So uh, so we're fortunate to have had Roanne and, and the role that she's played in serving our community, both in the Assembly and now in, uh, in state government. Uh, so I think individuals will make their own choices. I think the lieutenant governor, if she became the governor, would uh, keep the cabinet in place. She is an upstater. Lieutenant Governor Hoka was actually here in Rome uh, last Thursday. We mm-hmm. spent uh, half a day with her assemblywoman, Button Shaw, and myself, the county executive, Pacenti. We were with her uh, uh, throughout the day. And, um, you know, it, it'll be interesting because... So I have a very short period if she decides to become a candidate for the office, too. Uh, you figure you have the rest of this year. The next year she'll be yeah. facing a potential primary. and Because uh, I'm sure you will have a number of people oh, if there's yeah. a vacancy yeah. in a Democratic uh, uh, nomination process to surface and to contend for that position. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. It's, and by the way, Roanne, I think, is, and Joe, you would know more than the rest of us, played a, an enormous role in keeping the focus on upstate New York and and our central New York, uh, Mohawk Valley, Utica, Rome, in uh, in particular, absolutely, yeah, yeah. There's no question, and I and I think I we talked about this previously. It's great that Kathy Hochul, who is an upstater or Western New Yorker, uh, is in charge now. She's not a, a New York City person. I know we always fear that, but what comes next? And does that mean they just totally totally turn a blind eye to upstate New York and focus on city issues? I'm talking about the next yeah. governor after yeah. you after know. Kathy. So. Hmm. Um, it's going to be an interesting election. It is. Okay, Joe, we appreciate it. And uh, what do you want to lay some odds down? Let's put a bet on this thing. Come on. Let's go. Well, that's what you should do. Maybe you should <laughs> take check Vegas and see what the odds are right now. Yeah. They have is odds it, on everything. Is it today? And, uh, is it tomorrow? Is it over and, the weekend? And I had recommended that in New York when we did Sportsbook that we expanded. And actually, if we're going to do something, go all the way like they do in uh, Vegas. Yeah, I we agree. Went, we you know, we didn't do that in New York. We have so many prohibitions. We allow mobile or uh, sports betting, uh, but now we uh, have so many of these prohibitions on it. But I would have made it more like Vegas, and you would have had the odds on it right now, bro. Joe, do you know how much money I could have made betting against Syracuse football? And you can't do it. <laughs> you can't do it in New York. What is going on here? <laughs> You're, you're All right. right. Well, I'm you know I'm I'm hopeful for SU football. By the way, this but, this year, although they're being predicted as the last place team in the ACC, and the only uh, state uh, elected official with a higher approval rating than Governor Cuomo's a year and a half ago, Joe Griffo. By the way, yeah, Joe, you've been able to maintain that. No craziness. Uh, I don't know how you've done it. Well, I, I come on the Keeler in the morning that show is, and listen to Jeff, you, and Andrew. So. That's exactly it. Thank you for that. I know Joe. you guys are out there. So take care. Thanks Hi, for Joe. keeping uh, the Thanks. community informed. Thank you so much. Uh, Senator Joe Griffo on a uh, an epic day uh, here, an epic 24 hours in New York State. It's crazy.